Women's basketball picks up a huge win in the Horizon League. We sit down with the baseball team's new head coach. All this and more coming up on the Penguin Rundown. What's up, Penguin Nation? I'm John Schiraldi. This is Mike Yerstowski, and of course, welcome to the Penguin Rundown. Michael, how are you today? No, I'm pretty good. The sports have been great around here, but the weather, John, has been better. It's been like 65, a little bit of rain, but for the most part, a lot of sun. Good hair weather. You don't have to worry about any rain messing yeah, up that, that dew. Is, that's, it's snow, especially. And, and, the and, snow is even worse. And that's a challenge. I it's mean, a challenge. Nobody... Well, I think you can do it, too. I mean, your hair is... Not just the easiest thing to roll nope, out of bed with. It's either. frozen. Frozen with the oh, hairspray. This, this is waterproof, bulletproof, windproof. <laughs> oh, Whatever yeah? you throw at it, we're good to go. But mm. I believe that's enough talk about cosmetics. Let's get in. Yeah, this is a sports show. So I, if, why don't you start us off with uh, men's basketball? Sounds good to me, Michael. It has been a busy final week for the YSU men's basketball team. The Gwyns have played three games in six days, including their final two home games at the Beagley Center for this season. First, on Thursday, YSU faced off with the third-ranked Wright State Raiders. Despite YSU outscoring the Raiders by eight points in the paint, the Penguins' 13 turnovers turned into 15 Wright State points and ultimately led to the Raiders' 84-81 win. But not before Cameron Morse would make his mark. The junior followed up his Horizon League Player of the Week honors by gashing Wright State for 35 points on 13 of 23 shooting. This was his 33rd career game with 20-plus points and fifth game this season with 30 or more. Morse now sits first in the Horizon League in scoring in fifth in Division I men's basketball. Saturday, YSU looked to bounce back versus the fifth-ranked Northern Kentucky Norse, a team who entered Saturday with a four-game win streak. We take you now to the Beagley Center for YSU's final home game of the season. Senior night and Carson Williams thinks he's got an easy layup until Matt Donlin says, no soup for you, and sends that ball into the row. Matt Donlin, the Aussie, would come down the other way and can the triple from long distance for three of his 14 points. But Drew McDonald would respond with a three of his own. The sixth leading scorer in the Rising League struggled a bit in this one, but good on that one. And here, another guy that's known for his scoring, Cameron Morris, actually with seven assists in this one. This one here to Jordan Kaufman, who uses the dream shake to get the easy fader in the middle of the key. Second half, we pick things up. Garnett on the wing, and he finds teammate LaVon Holland, who says, Happy Senior Night, fellas. Yep, Holland comes right down the middle of the key, uncontested. Another look here for two of a very loud two of his 13 points on the afternoon. And the Penguins mounting their run, starting first with a David Haygood slam off the Cisco feed. Then Cameron Moore says, You reach, I teach. Find Cisco for the easy lane. Another look here from the low end of the court. Cisco shakes the defender and puts that pass right on the money for Cisco for two of his 12 points. Then Braun Hartfield thinks he's going to have an easy steal, but Garnett drives in and finds teammate Drew McDonald for the end one. NKU not willing to let YSU come back in this one, but have no fear, Jordan Kaufman. Cameron Morris is here, who cans the pull-up jumper from the left elbow, affectionately icing this one for the Gwyns. He would finish with 27 and five. YSU wins 81 to 77. A short turnaround for the Penguins as they traveled to Oakland to face off with the second-ranked Golden Grizzlies. Oakland turned 17 YSU turnovers into 26 points and route to their 101 to 72 win. Morse led the Penguins in scoring once again with 15, while freshman Braun Hartfield had 12 points to go along with four rebounds and three assists. YSU now sits at 11 and 19 overall with a 5 and 12 conference resume. As things currently sit, they're projected to play the ninth seeded Milwaukee Panthers in the first round of the Motor City Madness Tournament, a team YSU split the regular season series with. The Gwens will head next to Cleveland State this Saturday for their final regular season game. Tip off is set for 3.30 p.m. in the Wolstein Center. You can watch the game live on ESPN3 in the Watch ESPN app. The women's basketball team took on Northern Kentucky in a crucial game for seeding in the current Horizon League standings. Let's take a look at the game. We head inside of the Big League Center here where early first quarter YSU down by one until Allison Smolenski drives the baseline and off balance reverse shot gets it to go. The Penguins would go up by one in this game. 
We move later in the first quarter when Northern Kentucky with the basketball swings it over and a cross pass, a skip pass to Taryn Taher for three in the left wing. She drills it. Her only three of the game. Northern Kentucky's only three of the game. They were one of 15 from deep. And Rebecca Lytle tries to throw the skip again. This time, India Benjamin, one of the fastest guards in the league, and she goes coast to coast for the layup. Cuts Weiss's deficit to two. We moving into the second quarter, Michaela Terry with a nice backdoor cut with a nice strong finish in traffic and puts NKU up by two. Weiss would have some excellent ball moving off the offense, a rebound, the one extra. And as everybody knows in basketball, the one extra leads to almost a make every time. Smolinski drills in and Weichu goes back up. We fast forward to the fourth quarter where things got interesting. Weichu up by five. Taryn Tarr, the offensive rebound again, and one. She had 20 points. Weichu, or excuse me, Northern Kentucky would actually tie it up at 61 before India Benjamin. 45 seconds left. Benjamin hangs in the air, gets the floor to the go. The Penguins are up by two. Northern Kentucky would answer with Michaela Terry driving again this time. Feet get tripped up between Melinda Trimmer and India Benjamin and Tara Tara, right place, right time, 63, all as we head to overtime. Why she would use an 8-0 run in the overtime period and a big shot right here. Melinda Trimmer from Mary Dunn, bang, knocks it in and the Penguins go up by 6. They get on the win, 77-73. to The Penguins then return home Saturday afternoon to take on the league-leading Wright State Raiders. Penguins led for more than 21 minutes in the contest, but being outscored 27 to 11 in points off turnovers helped the Raiders make a late comeback, earning themselves in 68 to 64 victory. India Benjamin Allison Spolinski led the way for YSU, combining for 43 points and 10 rebounds. Monday afternoon, Mary Dunn was awarded her fourth Horizon Lake Freshman of the Week honors. Dunn averaged 12 points and shot better than 54% in both games last week. She's also making a strong case for Freshman of the Year as she leads all freshmen in points per game field goal percentage, and blocks. Why should we include the regular season with two home games, including one tonight at 7 o'clock against Oakland? Tickets are available for purchase, and the game will be also available live on ESPN3 in the Watch ESPN app. The women's bowling team finished in sixth place this past weekend at the Crusader Classic in Valparaiso. Saturday, the Gwyns began the day with a 971-859 victory over number 14 Wisconsin Whitewater to finish the traditional team match round. Wyshu then defeated Elmhurst 4-2 in their first bracket match. Unfortunately, the Penguins fell by seven pins in Game 2 and lost by just one pin in Game 4. Alexis Grimm had an impressive performance Saturday with a 2-0-1 against Wisconsin Whitewater and finished seventh overall in the individual standings. Wyshu will be in competition next at the Hawk Flight Invitational in just two weeks. The men's tennis team was in action this weekend at the Boardman Tennis Center. They would drop their first match Friday against Toledo, but then would bounce back to pick up two wins against St. Bonaventure and Carnegie Mellon. Another strong showing from Mitch Mercer and Tomas Rodriguez picking up two wins in doubles play. In singles play, Tomas Rodriguez, Jao Guerrero, Gabriel Tolsani, and Luke Purser would also pick up wins for YSU. The women's tennis team had a tougher things at the Akron against Monday, excuse me, at home against Akron. Sophia Macias, Aman Hasim, and Noel Sahani would all pick up wins in singles play, but it would not be enough as the Gwyns would fall 4-3. Now, both the men's and women's tennis team will travel to Dayton tomorrow. Who doesn't like free stuff? Well, this week, the Penguin Rundown crew went around campus gauging Penguin Nation's school spirit and asking students to sing the official Youngstown State fight song for a chance to win a free YSU t-shirt or a gift card. Here's what our crew came up with. The red and white are waving over the field. The red and white are waving, yeah, waving over Bliss Hall. The red and white are waving over the field. The red, white are waving all over the field. Right. On the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. Alright, uh, go YSU, fight, 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 uh, we will win it all, yeah. The way- Wait, you can't even do it at the same time. Why not? Because <laughs> you gotta, you gotta kind of memorize it. Our teams are fighting with the spirit that will not yield, rah, rah, rah. Alright. You remember, I'm taking the card when you're done. Give me a second. Okay, you got it. Uh, how's this start? I'm just here for the free shirt. Really. The red and white are fighting over the field. Rah, 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 
Ra 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 ra. Hail to the O Youngstown. We'll fight for you. Wait, what am I trying to sing right now? Got five seconds. Okay. Tip. We are the red and the white. Over the field. We will not yield. Penguin Runda. The red and white are waving over the field. Once again, the penguins will win for YSU. Make sure to look for us here at the Penguin Rundown in the near future as we'll be all over campus with some more giveaways and contests real soon. Now over to softball. After having a difficult start to the beginning of their season, the softball team is heading to Winthrop, South Carolina to compete in their next tournament. The team will be facing schools such as Eastern Tennessee, Eastern Kentucky, and Mount St. Mary's over the weekend as the Gwens look to pick up their first win. Good luck to the team this weekend. Baseball began their season this past weekend in the Riverview Inn Governor's Challenge. The Gwens hung tough in each of their three games but ultimately came up short, losing all three contests. A bright spot on the weekend? Andrew Kendrick. The junior collected 11 RBIs and hit five home runs, one of which was a grand slam, earning himself Horizon League Batter of the Week honors. Kendrick was also named the National Player of the Week by Collegiate Baseball before, uh, before Coach Bertolini and company hit the road to travel down to Georgia Tech. Our very own Chris Colella got the inside scoop on YSU baseball. A new baseball season has begun for YSU, but it's not the only thing new for this program. Well, I think I, I got some good experience over the last eight years. I got a chance to be a head coach fairly young. I know I still look fairly young. So um, hopefully, you know, we build a program there that, that started, uh, wasn't uh, very successful when I took over, and, and we built uh, a winning culture there. And hopefully I'd like to do something, you know, start that here as well. So learned how to recruit, learned how to handle and coach players, and, and I look forward to the opportunity I have here. Coach Bertolini inherits a team that went 14-38 and 38 last season, but is confident about this group of guys. I told these guys, you know, we just want to work hard and get better every day. And I think, you know, this weekend we started, we got better every day. And, and um, you know, I think we have a team that can compete in the Horizon League. Uh, I think we'll, we'll, we might take our lumps early. We have a tough schedule. Uh, we play uh, uh, our first, I think, uh, 15 or 20 games on the road. So we, we'll learn a lot and then we'll be ready for our Horizon League schedule. Despite a rough opening weekend, Bertolini touched on Andrew Kendrick's fast start to the season, collecting five home runs and 11 RBIs. We felt pretty strongly about how he was going to be able to play, and, and he's got some serious power. He had 15 home runs at, at a junior college previous to coming here, so we knew that it was in there, um, but that was an amazing start. I mean, it, I've never seen anyone hotter than, than he was in those, in those first three games. I think he just got um, College Baseball National Player of the Week this week, so uh, hopefully he can continue that going, and, and some of our guys can feed off of those good swings and, and uh, you know, kind of energize our offense. The team will hit the road this upcoming weekend. However, there's no doubt where Coach prefers his post-game meals. Well, my wife makes fantastic food, so I gotta, I gotta give her some props there. I mean, I love the MVR uh, as well. Um, you know, our guys like Chipotle on the road, so that's a good place for us to stop. But, um, but uh, yeah, I think my wife would kill me if I didn't say I loved her cooking. So. For the Penguin Rundown, I'm Chris Colella. Once again, we want to thank Coach and our very own Chris, a.k.a. Kalella Bear, sitting down with Coach to get the inside scoop on the baseball team. Now, the track and field had a busy weekend as a number of Gwins were in action across the Midwest. Now, the Kent State tune-up, the Penguins participated in one distance race. Three runners placed in the top ten at the Alex Wilson Invitational in South Bend, Indiana. Both Arnaldo Morales and Ryan Booth had the first place finishes. Morales finished with the best height in the high jump, while Booth led the way in the shot put. Leading the way at the Akron Zips Invitational was none other than Chad Zallo. The sophomore finished first in the 60-meter hurdles with a time of 7.61 seconds for the third straight week. Zallo owns the NCAA record for the 60-meter hurdles with a time of 7.61 seconds. Senior Janie Corbett also had a first play finish in the weight throw and second place finish in the shot put. Good luck to the entire team as they compete in the Horizon Lake Indoor Championships this weekend at the Watts. The swim and dive team began the Horizon League Championships last night at UIC. 
Topping the leaderboard for the wins are swimmers Victoria Rose, Madison Arana, Shawnee Sato, and a deep group of divers led by Beck Stafford. To see individual and team standings, you can check out YSUsports.com or visit horizonleague.org backslash swimming. And now, Mike, it's time once again for everyone's favorite part of the show, the Penguin Play of the Week. Can I get a drum roll, please? You can, sir. Roll it! We take you to the Beagley Center, where Cameron Morse, coming up the left side of the court, clear eyes, full heart, can't lose. Banks it in off the glass, a huge and one bucket. See, he gets caught up in Kaufman's cheering there, almost misses the finish, Mike. You're right, he would have missed an almost what they called an old-fashioned three-point play, John. Another look here, Cameron Morse. One of my favorite things to do when I played basketball back in my glory days. You had glory days, Mike? Eighth grade, eighth grade, yeah. We won the championship. Mine was fifth, so. Hey, we all can't be superstars like Cameron Morse. Three grades better than me, Michael. That about does it for us here at the Penguin Rundown for news, highlights, and more. Be sure to check out YSUsports.com and be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat at Penguin Rundown 1. I'm John Chiraldi. And I'm Mike Rostowski. Thanks for tuning in, Penguin Nation.